Hey everybody, Jazzy here. This is the year 26 recap of Thrill of the Grill, my solo Warly world over on Twitch. This year I'm planting the birch nuts as early as I possibly can, a full two days before autumn starts. The wildfires will not be a threat in the first and last couple days of summer, so I'm safe to be outside the oasis during this time. I just hate getting to this later in autumn and feeling like I'm running out of time to harvest. In general, the birch nuts take around 7 to 8 days to grow, but sometimes it can be more like 10, so I'd rather play it safe and not worry about winter taking my acorns away. I'm digging up an area of turf down underneath my chest zone. It's not going to be massive, but it's an area that I walk by often, so it will be good for our purposes. I want to build a marble farm. Not just any marble farm, a gunpowder marble farm. Apparently this idea has been around the game for years and I had never heard of it, but a few streams back a viewer named Milos Karina told me that I could harvest up to nine marble shrubs with a single gunpowder. I was super skeptical about the idea at the moment, just knowing the small blast radius of gunpowder. But after the stream I tested it and it totally works. A single piece of gunpowder placed perfectly centered in a 3x3 three three group of marble shrubs will harvest all nine. Now this is going to be a sparse build because I can't place anything down on the turf or in the turf surrounding each zone for marble shrubs because they require almost a half tile of clearance to be planted. So no decorative structures or statues for this one. Besides, I'd be inevitably blowing it all up by accident. There's a slight issue though, because when the center marble bean grows a stage, it nudges the gunpowder off to the side, so it's no longer centered and can't be replaced because of the shrub hitbox. I'm still gonna proceed as is with this harvest, but it will likely require some tweaking soon. Anyways, while it's growing, I can put down some non-flammable decor. As long as these walls are a tile away from the marble tiles, they won't block any planting. I'm sweeping some of the stone walls to try and just break up the solid gray line of this default skin. I don't generally use the Victorian skin for busted down walls, but I think that it'll complement the deciduous turf where it crisscrosses. Interior decorator, my new calling. This fall, Kloss is going to give us two festive lights for our troubles. I can't wait to build more glow caps. I think that my next mega base world, I'm just going to turn on Winter's Feast around day 1000 and keep it there for the rest of the run. I do miss the wax paper for bundling wraps, so I would hope to have a couple stacks of it before turning on Winter's Feast. Unless I got a reed trap, then I'd use gift wrap forever. I want to build some more rabbit hutches for my cave entrance at the Moonstone Forest, so I'm planting 20 carrot seeds and tending to them once. They consume growth formula, and I don't really need more than 20 carrots right now, so I don't feel like trying for giants. I'm also running the Bunny Man Fire Farm for the first time in hundreds of days. This farm kind of sucks as of the Reap What You Sow update, but I still need to use it to farm bunny puffs. So you used to get a guaranteed two carrots from each bunny man, but now you only get one of either a carrot, a meat, or a puff. I get the need to nerf the carrot drops, but it's a shame that the meat had to be nerfed. Bunny Man used to be a really good source of meat. Oh well. It's time for the first marble farm harvest. I expected the gunpowder to miss a few shrubs because it was displaced, and I was not wrong. So the reason I didn't encounter this issue in creative world testing was because I used the long update command to speed up time, and that did not nudge the gunpowder because the growth happened during the skipped time. I imagine that if the shrubs were unloaded when they grew their first cycle, then the gunpowder would remain centered, but I'd much prefer to have this farm in an area that I pass by frequently. And then a viewer by the name of Smoxie suggested that I just leave out the center shrub. Fine by me, I'm gonna be farming a ton of marble with just this zone and I got plenty of niter, so I'm not overly concerned with using gunpowder as efficiently as possible. This is my reward for never cheesing bosses. I got some giant carrots. I completely ignored them, and they grew giant. Chat reminded me that I was growing a ton of asparagus in these farm plots, so they were likely maxed out on growth formula. Okay, so if a carrot plant eats two arrows of growth formula, then a maxed out farm plot will have fed 10 carrot plants for two growth cycles, and then half of those plants would still get fed for their third cycle before running out of nutrients. But remember, a plant can still grow giant with one stress point, so if nothing else bad happened to them and they just didn't get fed that last phase, they were still gonna be big boys. It's a day 1768 miracle. A couple days later, I'm putting the carrots to use and setting up a couple of rabbit hutches at the Moonstone sinkhole. This is a fairly standard setup. 
The bunny man will bite the bats, and I don't need to deal with them every time I get a hound wave. I'll just need to wall them up so that they don't wander off. I got a tree regrowing in one of the areas that I filled with stone walls, and I was scratching my head trying to figure it out. My best guess was that this tree across from the water triggered the regrowth, because remember, structures will only prevent the regrowth of trees from other trees within a two tile radius. It still amazes me how wide of an area trees can influence regrowth, even crossing bodies of water to infest my land. Here is the finished look for the rabbit hutches. I'm abusing this beautiful moonstone wall skin. Plus, I think it'd be effective for a build that might get the occasional nibble from a battlisk. Less upkeep on any build is always welcome. I'm burning more forest. Again. There's a fair amount of petrified trees back here, so I need to mine them out after I burn. But they actually make the forest fires easier to control since they won't spread to petrified trees, so I don't mind them. I'm just curious if they also trigger tree regrowth. They probably do, I'm just gonna mine them. After the overgrowth was cleared away, I'm doing the same thing as last time, just placing stone walls three tiles apart for the purpose of preventing regrowth until I can build more in these zones. Day 1786 will be known as the first completely successful gunpowder marble harvest. Look at those shrubs topple. This is a fairly expensive farm, but it's gonna save me so much time from mining. Even mining with honey seasoned food. This is just instantaneous. This farm hits all the marks for a good farm. It's fast, it can be used on an as-needed basis, it doesn't take up a ton of space, and it utilizes explosives. 10 out of 10 Milos, and Smoxy too. My viewers, best viewers. Okay, so I neglected this round of carrots, and I was starting to pick the rot when chat reminded me that I can just leave them and eventually they'll replant themselves. It's pretty nice that you never really need to worry about waiting too long for crops if you're not going for giants. It's a really forgiving system. And if a fruit fly lord has spawned somewhere else, you don't even need to worry about spawning one from rotted crops. I'm plowing a strip of tile for farm plots near the moonstone. My intention is to fill it with weeds. I just want to see how it looks, but I think it could look cool. I know some players who only use the farm plots for weeds, which, you know, I respect. Soothing tea is a pretty nice recipe, but I don't really know much about farming weeds, so there's gonna be a bit of trial and error. And then it finally happened. We got a hound wave during the moonstone event. It's so awesome when this happens because we just get extra hounds. I can't even tell which dogs are a part of the wave and which are the varg summons, and frankly, I don't care. We are gonna get so much moonstone from this single harvest. I'm gonna be able to build like six walls with all this moon rock. It's gonna be amazing. And now I'm planting seeds in these farm plots. I'm not sure what I was thinking here. I guess I figured some of them would make weeds and I just dig up the rest, but I mean, as long as we're gonna get a variety of crops, then maybe that'll look nice too? I don't know, I'll just let them grow and see how it looks. I also put a lane of moon crater turf in front of the farm plots, and picked out a simple repeating pattern for the lane, which will use berry bushes, moon dials, and lunar saplings. It's pretty basic, but I like the look, and it's easy to fill in once I settle on the pattern. The diagonal cobble road leading to the sinkhole is shaping up to be more of a roadblock. No pun intended. I want to put down busted wood walls, but I want to find a turf with smoother corners so that the outside turf doesn't intrude too much on the road. Right here, I'm trying out slimy turf, but you can see the corners are still way too sharp. Seems like forest turf might actually be my best bet, so I'll go with it. Another benefit to lining your roads with some structure is that they block regrowth. Now, one of the byproducts of weed farming is forget me lots, which can be cooked up in a crock pot with honey and ice for soothing tea. Filler can be any extra of these ingredients or, you know, a berry. It's a really nice food that provides a timed sanity restoration. Kind of like how jelly beans give timed healing. After about a minute, you will have restored 45 sanity, which is almost as good as jelly salad or ice cream. I mean, that's really not bad for a weed. The back of the farm plot, I'm just gonna turf up with deciduous and fill in with birch nuts. Ironically, it's mostly to prevent regrowth. Sometimes I do the game's work for it. But no, I think it will look better than evergreens and twiggies. I'm going with the wood walls for the front of the moon crater turf to give the road a more crafted look. I'm just a little concerned that this is making the turf narrower in appearance, and I'm wondering if it's gonna look too crowded as a result. Turns out, yeah, it's got too much going on now. So I'm gonna remove a handful of lunar saplings close to the walls just to free up some space and show the turf a little bit more. And then I'm putting the wood walls up the diagonal road to the sinkhole. It looks fine. I can barely see the forest turf poking through and at least it's consistent. I really don't mind. 
it's not gonna haunt me every trip through here. No, no, not at all. Okay, so instead of planting generic seeds all the way up this road, I'm just gonna till all the farm plots and leave them empty for weeds to grow inside. I probably should have done this from the start, but we'll have some options for a comparison soon. I'll let you decide which look we will use, and then we get to replicate this entire build on the other side of the Moonstone. But then I'm off to the Oasis for the rest of summer. The only real highlight from summer was that I cracked 720 stone fruit with gunpowder, and then burned all of the fruit before picking up the sprouts. I didn't count them, but we were expecting around seven sprouts, so that's an oof. Kind of the only reason I keep farming the stone fruit at this point. I don't need the food, my rock chests are basically full, and I just want the sprouts for finishing the bush farm and decorating my builds. So yeah, sometimes I work and destroy simultaneously. It's a vicious cycle. And in the final couple days of summer, I'm walking over to the savanna with a saddle, a bell, and a dream. That's right, after 1800 days, Jazzy is finally going to attempt to domesticate a beefalo. And in retrospect, I'm very glad to have done this. Next year, we'll focus around taming this elegant and majestic cow. So we'll cover all the basic mechanics and in the process show how taming a beefalo is actually quite easy as of recent updates. I look forward to sharing the whole process. Thanks for watching. I hope you're enjoying the recaps, and maybe next time we can catch you live over on Twitch. Take care.